Hello folks and welcome to the channel or oh, welcome back and in this video we're going to work on the race car and more specifically on the brakes because they don't seem to work at all. I don't know what the problem is with the brakes but what I do know is that the brake pedal feels like a rock. There is no way you can depress it. And even if you push hard on it it even does not stop the wheels. So the brake calibers are not moving, but most likely the main brake cylinders have seized up. We have two master brake cylinders from Girling, one for the rear brakes and one for the front brakes. And I don't see a lot of liquid inside this one. This one still have braking fluid inside. Uh, so let's see. Um, well, that seems to be locked. So we're gonna use some pliers to open that up. Not something I really like to do, but sometimes we don't have a lot of choice. So I can still see braking fluid inside. Um, this one is very low, but I'm afraid that uh, everything is corroded. You can actually see that we have rust on the lid, but also we have white deposits in the back uh, on the body itself, and, and that is not really good either. So. Let me remove this cable here. Not sure what that is. And if you look to the brake paddle, you'll see on one side we have a rod connecting to the master cylinder of the front brakes. And on the other side, we're having a rod going to the master cylinder of the rear brakes. And the two can be balanced out by this little bar that goes in between them and the wire that comes out here. Uh, this is what we call brake bias. And as you can see, we can pivot this back or forth. So you have more force on the front wheels or the rear wheels, depending on how you adjust it. And this is the knob where you actually are adjusting the bias to the front or the rear brakes by rotating it. Unfortunately, this knob doesn't work anymore. So we'll have to fix it. And the way it's been installed is um, pretty pitiful with high wraps. Let's take the wheels off and have a look on the brake calibers. <laughs> Just gonna put up the nuts so I don't lose them. The overall state of the discs isn't too bad. They are a little bit rusted, but that's normal if it's been sitting around for so long. So I'm going to clean up the discs a little bit and then we'll check them if they are still straight and then we'll check the thickness. But overall, I can still rotate it. So they are not seized, which is a good thing. I don't see immediately any deep grooves, which is another good point. And then we'll have a look on the brake caliber. I'm using some steel wool just to clean them up a little bit. Well, that will be good enough. So let's check the thickness on the brakes. And that's still about 10 millimeters, so they are good. I don't feel any edges, so these discs are not that old. They're just a little bit rusted or surface rusted. So now let's see if they are still straight. And to check for the straightness of the discs, I'm going to use a micrometer dial. So I have positioned the micro dial onto the disc, and now I'm going to 
make sure that the needle just touches it and then we will zeroize the dial. So now I'm going to rotate the disc and we'll see how much deflection we have. Now a little bit is okay because the surface isn't all that clean but if it's too much then the disc is bent. So now I'm going to rotate the disc and see how much deflection we get. So far so good. Now we're getting a bit more. I think this is about the maximum. Yeah. About 12 is the maximum deflection we have. And uh, that is a 0 0.12 millimeters. So that is nothing. Uh, that disc is quite all right. And since we have everything set up, I might as well check the play on the bearing. Um, and therefore I'm pointing to the top of the disc and I'm going to move around the disc so that I will check the play on the bearing. Uh, the meter is attached to the upright, so that together should not make any movement. If the bearings are gone, that's a different story. Well, I should move the disc back and forth. Yeah, I think this is quite all right. There's no, nothing wrong with that. And if I rotate the disc, well, I don't see much of an issue here either. A little bit of deflection, but that's normal because there's surface rust on it. But besides that, I think the bearing here, at least on this little test, is good as well. So I'm quite happy with the disc and the bearings. So now let's look at the brake caliber. I can see that the brake calibers are made by Fiat. So I'm going to remove the brake calibers from the disc. There's a bolt here and there's a bolt on the bottom. And then hopefully we can lift that off. Now that bolt here is not the easiest one. You can't get a spanner in, so I have to use my special uh, wrench and that should probably work. Okay. Well, that wasn't that tough. All right, so I'm going to disconnect the brake line and I will remove, so I'm going to disconnect the brake line. And now I'm going to have a closer look on this brake caliber. So let's uh, open up the brake caliber and see what state it's in. I already removed one of these split pins. There's another one to be removed right here. And now I should be able to move this back and forth. All right, this is good. I probably need to do the other side as well. Okay, so let's remove the little locking pins or split pins as we call them. Okay. okay. That's out. Right. So I think now we should be able to move things around. Yep. It's one that came out. Come on, and here's the second. All right. I know I should be working with gloves, but it's too painful, I don't have the feeling. So let's see, oh, here we go. So we've got this apart. Right, and here we have the cylinder and see what this guy is doing. The brake pads themselves, they still look in a pretty good condition. 
Yeah, I can't see the brand of it. It's called Jurio, something like that. Let's see if maybe another name. Yeah, it's Jurit. That's what the name is. But they still look quite all right. The brake levers are what we call single piston. And this is the piston right here. So now I'm going to see if I can actually move this around. But before I do so, I'm just going to have a quick check inside here on the corrosion. Uh, that's not too bad. I've seen worse than this. So I'm going to try to move this piston back a bit and see if I can get any movement in it. Just going to use a metal bar and some spanners and see what happens. And this feels pretty much stuck. Wow. So I think they are really corroded at the inside. Not good. I'm just going to release it because it doesn't make sense to force it. And I don't think it has moved at all. So that is not good. Either I get new ones or I try to get the piston out. Uh, let me remove this seal. There we go. And now let's see how bad that is but that's just the seal um, I'm going to spray some liquid on it trying to get it released uh, but I don't think I will have a lot of luck and I'm going to use a bigger spanner and give it another shot Let's see if I can squeeze them in. And it's a bit of force, but ah. yeah, it's moving. All right, this is good. Here we go. That's what I wanted to see. Good. So now the next thing is I'm going to take them out completely and to take out these um, pistons to check them inside. I'm going to put some compressed air into the um, brake fluid intake and that should move the piston forward I will place a little metal bar here so it doesn't really fly out because I've had that before so let me put some air in oh there we go see that it came out nicely okay and I'm gonna try to move it a little bit more to pop, make it pop out. Maybe I put the brake pad up. That just did it. And you can already see it is still pretty much intact. But I'm going to get it completely out. So now you know why I was putting some blockage for the piston when I was putting pressure into the caliber because it's going to pop out very violently. So now let's have a look on the state of this caliber. As you can see the piston is still in a very good shape. It has a little bit of corrosion at the bottom but it's almost nothing and that is not sitting where the seal is so that is good. So the piston goes inside the caliber and inside you actually have a seal, this is the seal, and the actual seal is that rubber part right there. It can be a bit tough to get it out sometimes, but here it is. And that's what seals it off. So this seal still looks all right inside. I don't see too much of it corrosion. So this caliber is more or less all right. Um, but I still am going to get a reconditioning kit for it. So and the reconditioning kit typically comes with a new piston and a new seal at the inside. But let's see if I can get this stuff because I'm not sure if this is still available. I'm going to remove the remaining three calibers and I will follow exactly the same procedure by taking it completely apart, do the inspection 
and then put it in the ultrasonic cleaner and then I will wait until I have the parts um, to reassemble it and recondition them. Meanwhile, I'm going to let the car bleed. It seems like the brakes are coming from a Fiat 128 and I can get a repair kit from Ridex, including the piston and the dust seal and the other seal inside and a venting cap and so on and some installation grease for 13.73 euros. Now that's very cheap. But I want to make sure that the piston is the right size, so it says 48 millimeters. So let's see what this is, right? And this is, yeah, that's 48, so we are good. So I'm going to order up four pieces, as you have seen here. And then we should be good to recondition the brake calipers. And I can also get the brake pads from Brembo, which is a pretty good brand. And uh, this comes as four of them. So this is good for one axle, so I think I will get basically um, two sets. And let's see if this is about the same, because that's important that they have the same dimensions. So I think this is looking pretty much the same. So I'm going to order at least two sets. So let's knock off the disc. And I can get also a set of new Brembo discs, uh, but I need to check the diameter. Now this is always handy if you have this kind of information, because then you can actually measure it out. So let's see if this is more or less correct. So the diameter should be around, uh, let's see, 227. Yeah, that's right. Let's check it out like this. So this is already... 35.8, yeah, that is correct. So that is the right disc. So in terms of the disc, uh, these discs are still all right. They are on the car. Um, I don't know if I should get vented discs or not. Um, I'll see. I, I think I will order first the standard Fiat 128 discs because that's what they are. And I just looked that up. And uh, we'll see how they go on the track. If they turn to get too hot very soon, then I'm going to change them out for vented discs. It's a quick change anyway. We ordered up the brake pads for all around the car. We've got four new discs and we've got also four repair kits. And all that for about 150 euros. So that is very cheap. Um, and it's Brembo, so that shouldn't be too bad. But we'll see how it behaves on the track. <clears throat> so while I was working on the wheel, I noticed that the upper triangle has a bit of play. See that? It moves back and forth. So that will be something else we'll need to fix, but this is not for this video. And here we have the upright, and attached to that is the wheel bearing. And I noticed that there is a bit of play on it. So I might have to take all this off as well and check uh, if I can get the replacement or just tighten up the bearing. But that's for another video. But first of all, we're going now to inspect the master cylinders and see what's wrong with them. First of all, I want to disconnect the flex pipes on it. Okay, that's a bit tight. But okay, we got it. It probably will leak, so I need a bucket. So let me put the bucket underneath. There we go. And do the banyo connection. So I'm going to try to disconnect now the master brake cylinders from the pedals. There's a couple of bolts, don't you? So this one is loose. Now we need to do the second one. This one was turning crazy, so the thread is damaged on the rod, so not a good thing. It's just a very annoying place to work. That's number one. And number two. 
So now the pedal can move all the way out. And I can actually start looking on how we go in to deal with this uh, bias adjustment. We, but we do that in a few minutes. But first of all, let me remove the main brake cylinders. So let's see if uh, we can get these bolts to release. Ah, oh, not easy to get at. Okay. That should work. And here is that first one. I'll still have to do a second one, which is a little bit more difficult to get to. But at the end, it will all, all work. All right. And the bolt should come out, hopefully. There we go. And I should be able now to pull out the master brake cylinder. And here it is. Finally, we got them out. And now it's time to inspect it. Let's see if we can open it up and then see how far we can get. Man, this is all so rusted up and corroded. I can't get this off. I'm gonna break it and maybe it's not supposed to go off because it has the extension on it. So maybe I should leave that on. But then let's look in the front here. Uh, let me disconnect as much as I can. So this part connects to the paddle, so I shouldn't be losing that. Uh, this guy here, well, let's see. The thread is really gone. Um, let's see if we can open this up, this guy, and have a look inside. Now inside there is a circlip, so if I can squeeze that together, I should be able to pull this thing apart. All right, so let's see if we can get this out. All right, that's number one. It comes out. It's pretty dirty or, no, in fact, it's quite greased. So I'm gonna to try to get the piston out by applying air pressure, uh, where normally the oil goes, and we'll see if we get it out or not. Uh, but I'm going to place a cloth up, because otherwise it may fly away. I sprayed a bit of liquid in it and see. I think it moved a little bit. Yes, it did. And try to push it back. Oh, that's tough. Ah. So I think this guy is still in a good shape. So maybe what I'll do is I'll put some brake fluid in and then see what comes out of it. I've been spraying brake cleaner inside uh, and now it's moving freely. So I'm just going to put some brake fluid inside and I'm using DOT4. I don't know what was in there before. It might have been silicon based because that's a higher boiling temperature. That seemed to work. I'm going to pump a bit more so all the debris is out. Well, that seems to work real well. All right, that's good.
Okay, that looks good. So I think the master cylinder is working again. But I'm not sure if I'm going to reuse it because brakes are critical on if you drive on a racetrack. So I might try to find a couple of new ones. Uh, and if not, then I will have to test these out once they're back on the car. And this little push rod, which on one side fits inside the master brake cylinder, and on the other side, it bolts into the uh, pedal. And the tread is pretty bad. So the counter nut can't really be locked anymore. So that is no good. So that certainly will have to be renewed. So this is the famous brake balancer and it connects on one side to the rear brakes, on the other side to the front brakes, master cylinder. They are sitting right here. And depending on the position of this rod, this threaded rod, because I can kind of rotate this and it's going to be a little bit tough to show you, but let me see if I can do this. See how that moves. So now this is moving to the left or to the right and thereby it's actually moving the position of the two push elements onto the master brake cylinders. And because it's pivoting in the middle of the brake pedal with, with this part, if both distances are the same, you will apply the same pressure on both master cylinders. But if one distance is longer than the other one, then actually the short one will win out. So this is how that works. And there's a knob, and this is the knob right here. That's the one you need to turn. And see, I'm turning it now. Now you can see that actually the cable right here is a bit broken. So this is another point we'll have to weld it on or solder it on. I think in this case, probably welding is the better approach. I probably will cut it off and have a weld on a small metal tube and then weld that cable onto that tube and then we should be good. So these are the changes we still have to do. I have removed all four brake calipers and also the discs and they are now ready to be reconditioned as soon as I have the spare parts. We also removed the master brake cylinders and we were able to get both of them to work again. Uh, now they move in and out again. It doesn't seem like they're corroded inside but still, I don't want to take chances with a brake system. So I might look around for some new ones. And these are the Girling three-quarter um, brake uh, master uh, brake cylinders. So I think I might be able to find those. Um, and I might buy a set of new ones. Uh, it's, it's always better. And we also checked the brake bias. There we've seen that the cable is really ripped. So we need to weld on a new cable. And all that uh, will be for the next episode where we're going to recondition the brake calibers. And we're going to put the new discs up. Uh, we're going to put the new brake pads up. And then we're going to weld up that cable and we'll put back those new um, master cylinders. And then uh, we'll bleed the whole system and then the brakes should be working. Thank you for viewing and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.